Good evening. Welcome to Moments with Lady K and Mr. T Show, where they converse on motivational living, clearing negativity from your life, local events, and more. Here are your hosts, Kimberly McLemore and Tarek Coles. All right. Hello and welcome to Moments with Lady K and Mr. T. Um, we are your hosts, Kimberly McLemore and Tarek Coles, better known as Lady K and... Mr. T. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 well. <laughs> How are you doing, sir? I am doing well, fairly well, or as they say, um, when you're from the country, I'm fair Midland. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as I shared with you earlier, um, I guess we can tell them a uh, when we're recording, uh, it's um, should should we tell them what what holiday it is? Well, I mean, I, I, we we can. I mean, you know, hey, <laughs> it's <Okay>. president. <laughs> well, it's it's, it's president's, president's day. day. Yay, woo. So, yeah, I woke up this morning. I said, "Happy President's Day, Joe Biden. Happy President's Day, Barack Obama." And then that was it. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Well, someone too. I was appreciative for. <laughs> I mean, uh, Bill is Bill is cool, and you know, and W, and he's W. But you know, I was like, well, if I have to send them a card, I would send them a card. But you know, I was very very happy. So, but it's also the day after Valentine's Day. I know. Yeah, it's a lot of lot of things, a lot of little celebrations going on. You know, uh, yesterday, like I said, was V Day, and. You know, and today is President's Day, and at least we definitely have something to smile about in that perspective. Uh, you know, don't have to worry about listening to any foolery nonsense <laughs> today. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm real excited about that, you know, and most obviously, you know, yes. most people, <laughs> obviously most people, you know, don't really celebrate President's Day. It's just another day. Uh, for them to have off and, 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 you know, a longer weekend per se, but yeah, it definitely has some meaning to it. And, um, the way things are today and the way times are, we definitely need more healing and more love and, you know, m- moving forward to, to getting some real malice back into our lives. Um, I definitely could see that positive transitioning, um, going on. So it is definitely uh, worth celebrating and mentioning, uh, today is President's Day, which is obviously, um, you know, important for for most people. But you know, like I said, it's 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 worth mentioning, and we have, and so <laughs> here we go! <laughs> yay, yay, yay! Oh, and and of course, with President's Day, if any of you are in need of a bed, this is the time to go shopping for it. If you need a new mattress, that's when they have the sales. <laughs> Sorry, new that's mattresses. <laughs> new cars, yeah, you know, all the all the extra goodies, and then also, you know, I guess it'd be kind of remiss that we're also still in the month of February, which is also Black History Month, and so there's definitely some things to celebrate in that perspective as well. Um, and you know, it was funny because yesterday, being that it's Valentine's Day, I posted something that had nothing really to do with Valentine's Day, but it was like it was <laughs> it was a part of history that I had no idea and. It just shocked me when I had got this pop up on my phone and um, about a woman named um, Gladys Mae West, who actually is the hidden figure behind the GPS. And all of us who know about the GPS, uh, you know, we use it continually. And the article had actually came to me through AccuWeather, which I thought was interesting because, you know, I, I look at the weather on my phone all the time and then all of a sudden these stories pop up every day and I would have never in a million years known that a black woman had been a part of developing the GPS. So I'm not going to dive all the way into uh, the story itself, but there's just another 
thing of just not knowing who we are and the greatness of who we are and being that it's Black History Month. Of course, every day should be Black History Month in my mind, but being able to share this, it's something that, you know, for those who are interested in digging a little deeper and understanding about the GPS and how it got started, definitely look this woman up. Um, Her name again is Gladys Mae West. Uh, She is a phenomenal woman. She's been a huge part of history with the GPS and uh like again like if you want to just find the actual article that i uh had received it's called accuweather.com and uh then you can get all the juicy information about this woman and how incredible she is and what she accomplished that we would have never known until this article had came out because everything's always so hidden so anyway Enough about that. Is there anything else that you would like to talk about and in reference to Black History Month there, um, Mr. T? Well, well, uh, for me, I would just encourage um, all of our listeners, whether you're black or black and non-black, um, to just take time out, um, especially this month, but even throughout the year, and just learn about all of the amazing contributions that black people have made to this country that we call America. Um, because, um, as, as you pointed out, a lot of times we don't realize things, you know, all the little things that we do and use on a day, on a regular basis, whether you're making a peanut butter sandwich or mm-hmm. getting brain surgery or using GPS, it's amazing that um, so many of us don't realize exactly who may what, or when we're driving and we have to stop at a stoplight, you know, right. all of these amazing things that we use every day. Uh, were invented by black people. And so a lot of times, you know, unfortunately, uh, especially when I, well, when I grew up, you know, it, it was a part of our curriculum, but now it doesn't seem to be as much. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful also for a mother who uh, took time out, not only just during the month of February, but throughout the year mm-hmm. to teach my brother and I black history. And she would take us to the black history cultural museum, um, in our area, you know, she would teach us about black colleges and universities, of which I went. I, I am uh, a, 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 a product of a, of an HBCU. Whoop whoop. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, she took time out to do some amazing things, and even to this day, with her her role. Um, and um, oh, and she wanted me to thank you for, uh, for 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 joining in on the Black History program that she did. That was a, a, a virtual experience this year with her organization. Oh. Um, so so she was like, oh, tell tell Kimberly, tell tell Lady K, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so <laughs> for those she's of, very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you, um, and most of you don't know this, but my mother, with the organization with, with, where, where she works, she's been uh, she's been uh, one of the first people who they uh, started the Black History Program at her um, her with her employer where she is, and um, she's been very big part of that uh, for oh gosh, how old am I? I'll say twenty plus years. <laughs> uh, so, but it's much longer than that. But it was say twenty plus years. But it's been it's for quite some time that, that she's been a part of that. And they had a virtual experience this year, and which was very uh, fun and, and informative. And they covered a lot of stuff just with our own local history, uh, where I'm from. And um, so that was amazing. But yeah, I would just encourage our listeners to bring it back full circle to take time to just learn about black history and all the wonderful things that black people do. Cause, um, I'm, our melanin be popping, but we be popping just in general. So, Hey, exactly. <laughs> snap, snap, snap. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We are definitely, um, a people of greatness. And a lot of times we don't even know that about ourselves. And so, to be able to share these moments in these platforms that we have, you know, gives us the opportunity to talk about who we are and what we do and what we have accomplished um, and what we continue to accomplish. And, you know, it's just, it's just a matter of knowing. And a lot of times, I guess, like I said earlier, you know, our history has been very well hidden from us in a lot of ways. So even, you know, in school, like when you talked earlier that, you know, we would have uh, black history month in your, and, you know, we would talk about particular um, individuals. It, I always found that it was always the same individuals. And so you always felt like there was only these handful of people who 
didn't who only accomplished these things for us in knowing that there had to have been many more people um prior to them to to even allow them to get to the point where they were at that they could you know continue to fight for our freedom and continue to um have people look at us as individuals and human beings as we continue to fight that fight today um which is even more sadder when you think about it because we should not have to constantly explain who we are because of the color of our skin. And, um, you know, that's, that's something that, you know, being that I'm in my fifties that, you know, I, I remember growing up with and being a product of the sixties and then seeing what happened in the seventies, um, particularly during those time frames that, it, you know, it just seems like every time we take a step forward, we always seem to have 10 step go 10 steps backwards because of people's, um, personal and, and uh, vendettas of what they believe or who they believe we are, what they think of us as individuals. And I just think it's really sad that we have to continue to have to have these conversations and have to have certain policies and things going on that we should not need um, knowing that we are all human and that um, humanity and mankind is for everyone, not just for a group of individuals. So that's just my um, thought process that, you know, I want to share a little bit about, but obviously, um, today that was not our, our purpose of, um, our show, but you know, it's, it's something that you, you can't just sit back and not say anything about, or not have any feeling about, because this is our everyday lives that we have to deal with. And until everybody learns to love each other and and respect each other and treat people the way they want to be treated, we will continue to have these conversations day in and day out. So that's all I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. That anyway. almost actually leads us up, up into our show topic, yeah. <laughs> even though we haven't finished our introductions yet. <laughs> you're right. You're right. So before, so, okay. So before we dive into the show topic, why don't we just go ahead and tell just a little bit more about who we are to our listeners, and then we will dive into the show topic that I haven't even mentioned yet. Cause I want to hold off on that. So Mr. T tell the amazing listeners, who you are. All right. Hello, all those out there in listener land. Uh, my name is Mr. T. Uh, I am a owner operator of Move with T LLC in Northern Virginia or in the DMV area. Of course, uh, if you're not from this area, then you'll want to know that that stands for uh, DC, Maryland, and Virginia, and not for the Department of Motor Vehicles. Shout out to those people that work there because we need them even though they make our lives <sighs> stressful sometimes, but they already know that mm-hmm. enough about them. But yes, but yes, so I'm lo- located here and move with T uh, LLC is a holistic approach to, fistic, to, to fitness. Um, it's not a uh, holistic as in um, medications and stuff like that, but I like to take a more holistic approach to uh, thinking about fitness, not just physical fitness, but mental wellness, uh, emotional wellness, and, you know, things that we can do, nutritional wellness. So I try to share things with my uh, movers and shakers, I call them, uh, throughout the week to encourage them to be their best selves uh, each and every day. Um, and, of course, of, and of course, there is the fitness aspect, so we do like to bring, tie that in as well. Um, also, I'm a contributor to the Z-Beat, uh, which is a monthly publication of um, instructors uh, that you can find online, and I'm a contributor to that. I do a monthly motivational piece. Um, with some amazing, amazing um, instructors that I enjoy a great deal. Um, Also, I am a doggy daddy. I know you all were waiting for that for me to talk about Mr. Pepper. (laughs) Um, So Mr. Pepper is alive and well. So I'm a doggy daddy to a wonderful little Shih Tzu who's lots of sassy, frassy, and um, full of personality. And um, he may be small in stature, but he's big in attitude. Um, and he's going to be getting a bath later today, so um, he doesn't realize exactly um, what he's in for. So, uh, yay me <laughs> later <laughs> on, <laughs> having to clean the bathroom after his bath. So once he gets clean, then I get to clean the entire space. So yay me. Yeah, <laughs> today is your lucky day. <laughs> it is, it is. And I'm also, just before we go, before I, I hand it over to you, I'm also the fortunate co-host 
of this wonderful podcast, Lady Moments with Lady K, Mr. Mr. T, and I'm so happy to be here uh, as your lovely, as your handsome co-host. Yes, Lady you are. K. That is that is very true. You are absolutely a doll. <laughs> so we, I love you. I love you, and I'm sure everybody else does as well. So for those who are listening in that haven't had the luxury of seeing this handsome man, we'll have to pull back some of our pictures. And so you know, if you haven't pulled up everything to see who he is, which you should. Um, you know, Mr. T is an amazing, amazing uh, man. And I'm so proud to have him as my friend and is uh, absolutely a great co-host. Uh, it just brings in such a different perspective of everything. And I just love how we, you know, bounce off of each other. And even though um, our, the other thing that we have uh, that's unique between us that most people don't know, because I don't really talk about it as much as I'm also um, a previous Zumba instructor. I still hold my license. I just don't teach anymore, but we have that in common too. So the love of Zumba between us is is always something special and unique. So I, I thank you for being my co-host and being on the show with me. <laughs> love you to death. So Anyway, my pleasure. Well, <laughs> you have to tell the listeners all about you. Yeah, so just a little bit about me. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, I am definitely, um, like I said, I, most people don't know that I definitely did the Zumba stuff. Um, I still support in, in that venue, um, which I love to do. But the bigger part of who I am is that I am the CEO and founder of the Women's Small Business Initiative, and I am the host of your resource for success podcast um which is also right here on iheart radio and on many other platforms and it's probably one of the, the the things that i love the most out of everything that i do even though i'm also an author uh book coach um i'm actually an award-winning author and book coach i'm also a veteran uh 14 years but being um you know having the opportunity to be a podcast host is just something that i just truly truly enjoy because i get the opportunity to talk to some of the most amazing business owners and they, you know, share some awesome resources and information about what it means to be in business, what it means, you know, to deal with the things that we deal with as um, entrepreneurs, you know, but also the beauty of it, not just the challenges of it, and also provide some golden nugget information about what it takes to have a business. So if you <clears throat> excuse me, are truly interested in learning more about that uh, podcast, you know, please tune in on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. Eastern and listen to the shows because we have some amazing people on there. We also have authors. I've interviewed um, uh, sp sports athletes, uh, musicians. And then, of course, we have this amazing show here, Moments with Lady K and Mr. T, which I just love being a part of. And I'm hoping that, you know, we continue to grow this beautiful platform and, you know, do this on a more regular basis as well, because I know that what we bring together is very dynamic and um, it's all about our thoughts in the things that we have gone through in our personal lives, but it also we provide that inspiration that you guys all need to have um, to get through whatever it is you need to get through, but to learn and to realize that you are not the only person out there. You're not alone. We we have definitely had some of the same experiences in life and we just share that. We have the opportunity to share that here with you guys um, every month. So enough about me, enough about all the other stuff. Uh, I'm so ready to dive into this topic of conversation for today. What are we going to be talking about today, T? Oh, it's such a wonderful, wonderful topic, <laughs> and I love it so much. Um, it's uh, just because we're not friends does not mean we have to be enemies. Mm -hmm. dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> A loaded, <laughs> loaded, loaded topic, a loaded question, a loaded thought. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's so interesting um, how I came into that. It's kind of a twofold. Um, it's kind of a two twofold idea, or it won't be twofold, but um, there were two things that kind of inspired that topic. Um, one of them. Um, was and our listeners are probably like, oh, that makes sense. Um, was actually in regard to our like when we watch reality TV, how we often see people, the reality TV stars, um, 
pitted against one another. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're they're not necessarily friends. They just run in the same circles. But because right. they're not besties, they're often pitted against one another. And then I thought about in my um, uh, my own life how sometimes um, because I may not be friends with a certain uh, coworker or a certain uh, fellow instructor, like we're not friends, uh, and we maybe teach the same formats so or at work we do the same things, automatically people want to, because you're not hanging out together, you know, not that you dislike one another, you just don't hang out you're just mm-hmm. not friends so you know you're professional you're you respect one another but um at least in, in my case i respect those who respect me so you know there's that right. um but um you know how sometimes people try to automatically create this dynamic between you know people who aren't friends and they want to paint them as enemies and it's like and once so i got to thinking about that um just and and it's full, uh, or as full as I can think of, of it, and, I, and that's where the show topic kind of came came about. Like, just because we're friends, just because we're not friends, doesn't mean we have to be enemies. Mm-hmm. And um, and I think that's something that's really important for people to think about. You know, everybody's not meant to be our friend. Number one, um, right. everybody's not supposed to be our friend, and we're not supposed to be friends to everybody. It's just. There's there are far too many people in the world and on the planet, so mm-hmm. you don't have time to be friends with everybody. Right. So, exactly. Um, exactly. And and then there are times when you just have people you know whose personalities don't mesh with yours, and you know you just keep a, a, a courteous distance or a professional distance. You know, I've I've learned you know some people don't. I'll say don't some people don't rock with me because they just don't like my energy for whatever reason or um, really what happens more often times than not when I meet some people uh, and it's it's very rare but I'll be like ooh when I meet somebody it's their energy their aura it just doesn't I'm like mm, I need to not be around you so mm-hmm. I just keep my distance and and this, of course listening to, to to your inner self but it doesn't mean that I disrespect somebody it doesn't mean that I don't like somebody it it just means that you know we might we we're not going to be um, calling each other on the phone, uh, right? Just keying all night. Right. right. <laughs> uh, we're not going to be sitting on the phone, and you know I'm not going to invite you over to my house on the weekend so we could uh, have Pinot Grigio for brunch, and you know, and vice versa. So it's just when I see you, hello, you keep it keep it moving. But mm-hmm. it's just so interesting how often people want to automatically pit people against one another and create this faux dynamic. And then the number of people who sometimes fall into that dynamic mm-hmm. and are thinking, oh, well, since you're not my friend, you must be my enemy. And then they end up subscribing to something unnecessarily when they didn't need to do that to begin with. Right. And I said, for those people that, that kind of create this narrative, um, it, it, it makes me sad, you know, that people need to... Um, that we as we as people uh, sometimes ascribe to what do they call it the drama? Mm, <laughs> like right. we want to see we want to see people at odds. You know, even when mm-hmm. um, usually it's the people that who are creating and spinning the narrative. They're probably as far removed from it as they can be, but they're just planting seeds here and here so they can sit back and watch something happen they didn't need to happen, which talked about who they are as people on the inside. So that, right. that's another conversation. Right. Um, but it's just interesting that, you know, some, some of us need that or, or feel that we need uh, that level of, 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 of discord in our lives in order mm-hmm. to feel content with ourselves. Mm-hmm. So like, we want to pit these people against one another so we can feel whole and, and, and feel like our lives are in control. Like, oh, well, my life ain't, ain't it's pretty good because look at what they're doing over there. They're constantly bickering, but they're not realizing what they they themselves might have done to, to cause that, that disruption that didn't need to happen. So Right, that's right. Well, as they say, that misery loves company, right? Right. Yes, the famous saying. And, and you're right, you know, it's it's picking it back off of what you've been saying and talking about, um, you know, th- this is the saddest part about how people react, um, the human you know, way of what we think, you know, we assume something that really isn't happening just because, 
we're not best friends, you know, and, and I think it, it's funny how some people will put themselves in a position where because you are friends with that person and it's almost like they have this jealousy thing going on with inside themselves because you, they see you talking to somebody else and you're not spending that time you know, with that person at that moment. And it really is just a moment, you know, it has nothing to do with what your true friendship is or what you do outside of that scenario, you know, whether you're in that room or wherever you're at, you know, or whether it's, um, you know, on a phone, anything, but the key is, it's, it's just funny how people preserve something that they think is happening or think they feel that's going on between people that really isn't happening. And that's how you do become enemies, which is, you know, is definitely another topic of a discussion. But, you know, like you're saying, just because we're not friends, we do not have to be enemies. It's just a scenario of just common respect. Now, granted, I may see you, you see me, I know we can speak, but at the same token, I don't want you at my dinner table. You know, it's, it's, it's just because mm-hmm. the fact that we are not in the scenario of being best friends. We just, Hey, we just go, we go about doing what you have to do because this is who we are as human beings. And we all would be, want to be treated respectfully. And I think that, you know, when you have situations like that, that's where you have to learn how to be the bigger person. You have to learn how to understand who you are. If you don't know who you are as an individual, then, you know, you're definitely going to come off to other people in a negative way that they don't even understand, you know, we don't even understand why we're in the situation we're in. It's just because you're feeling some type of way, but then you've put us into that pot that we're not asking to be in, you know? And I think that's the, the hard part about trying to understand people who feel that, you know, they have to have some type of control over their friendship and, uh, and friendship of others, you know, because I think we've all been in situations and circumstances where you, you know, you've had a great friend and even though you may be very close to that friend, you know, that other person knows somebody else too, but you don't necessarily know them any more than what you see of them at that moment or other times that you may see that person. But for some reason, there's definitely times where I have seen personally where there's that tendency of, of a person kind of having this jealousy way because I guess they feel like you've inserted yourself into being their friend and, and that's not acceptable, you know, to them. And then eventually it could make you become, feel like you're an enemy, but you don't even know why you're enemies. You know, you don't even understand how you got there because of a person's personal preference, personal thoughts, personal concerns, and the assumption of believing that you should not you know, be with that person. Cause that's my friend. You know, So it's, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. Um, but then, as you said, you know, it's really uh, a way of seeing how that person truly is. Um, and in my perspective, I think when, if I have an individual who's put me through that, it makes me feel, Hmm, if you feel that way about this person, what are you really thinking about me? You know, are we really friends? Because my friend, a true friend in my heart, I believe would not, you know, act that type of way, uh, when it comes down to that. But at the, you know, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. And, uh, you know, I definitely agree, um, that, you know, Hey, I, you know, I may not, we may not be friends, but at the end of the day, I want to see you be successful. I want you to have a great life, whatever it is that you're doing and trying to accomplish. But for me, I don't necessarily need to be around you. I don't necessarily need to have, you know, like you said, talk on the phone with you, hang out with you. And we certainly don't have to be, like I said earlier, at the same dinner table. That's just my perspective um, of what it means to just because we're not friends doesn't mean we have to be enemies. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 one of those topics that you don't really have to say a lot. <laughs> You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> the the, the it, you know the 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 topic itself the name of what we're saying you know it just it says so much right there you know um i'm sure that you and i both could sit here and have examples after example after example after example of what that really means and how it affects us but at the same token it's going to affect everybody differently everybody is going to have a different perspective of what this topic of discussion is, you know, you, you and I are somewhat on the same page on a lot of it. And then at the same token, you're still going to have a different thought process, you know, when it comes to a topic like this. So, 
Yes, indeed. I don't. I don't have anything to add this week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, it's really it's hard. It's 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 not a hard topic. It's a very simplistic, open in your face type topic, and it's like it's here. It's like there's not much more to say about it. It is what it is. Um, it, like I said, and at the end of the day, it really is kind of sad, you know, that there are people that you will encounter um, in your lifetime um, that, you know, you have to go through this. But I always think of it this way that, you know, if you feel that way, you're truly missing out on who that person really is. Or, you know, if if you just learn to get to know them, if, if that's a concern of yours, you know, about, hmm, why is this person talking to this person? This is my friend. If you really have that concern, just get to know the person. And then, then at that point, you can make your, um, you know, your discernment, their sensation of who you think that person is, you know, your thought process of who you think that person is um, after the fact. But I think that's where the, a lot of the misconception comes in is that people don't try to get to know the individual themselves. Indeed. And, and um, I, I, I will at this actually, you know, sometimes it, 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 well, it oftentimes it's very important just to, Realize that sometimes a colleague is a colleague, a coworker exactly. is a coworker, a peer is a peer, and leave it at that and just say, "Oh, okay." Mm-hmm. And and I agree hey, with you. you see somebody? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You see them and you say hello. You don't have to ask them, "Hey, how you doing? How's your kids? How's your mom?" I, you know, oh, he- oh, hello. Nice to see you. Mm-hmm. Well, have a great day. Bye. Right, exactly. And, and, you know, it's funny. And you can leave it at that. Right. And, you know, it's funny because when you talk about the colleague thing, you know, I I guess I'm kind of different when it comes to that, too. When I'm at work, I don't feel like I have to be your friend. This is a job. I'm here to do my job. You know, we we have a responsibility. You know, we get along. Now, obviously, there's some people that you feel sometimes closer to others. But even when I leave outside of that job, 90% of the time, I'm not hanging out with you. You know, <laughs> it's like, it's my job, mm-hmm. you know, I'm there to work, but I can speak, you know, to some people we're close, we're cool. We can hang out while we're there. It is, you know, in that perspective, but I'm not going to feel like I have to be your best friend outside of the job, you know? So I think mm-hmm. uh, that, you know, there's that misconception that there are definitely people who believe that, Oh, well, you should be friends in your job. No, no, we're here. To, we're here to do a job. I'm not here to be your best friend. We're colleagues. There, there's mm-hmm. a huge difference. And I think sometimes when you do mix it up too much and if something goes wrong in that friendship, it becomes very, very, very difficult to contain and to move forward, um, you know, in, in, in your work environment because you've had a falling out or you've had a disagreement, whatever you want to call it, with that colleague. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I think there's definitely, um, it needs to be, it should be some separation. I mean, it's no different in my mind when you talk about dating somebody, um, you know, on the job, that's obviously another topic of discussion, but it also can become a huge, huge problem if something goes wrong. And guess what? You're at that point where you're not even friends. You know, you are definitely can become enemies, you know, so, <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> It, it's just, you know, it's just, it's just a thought process that people just need to think about, you know, when they're looking at somebody, you know, when they're talking, um, you know, and I think it's, it's kind of funny how, even when I think about all the years that I have been here, um, in the DC area, this is my 16th year. And I really realized that everybody that I have met, majority of the people that I can say I've met here is all been through Zumba. And, you know, so when you're in the environment of Zumba, it, you know, it's all supposed to be about love and friendship and meeting people and going on a certain journey with these people. So obviously when you're in that environment, there are people that know, have known each other way before I ever came into the picture, you know, but being that I'm the person that I am, I'm just, I just enjoy meeting and talking to people that I feel like I have something in common with. And sometimes you can pick up, like you said, a vibe from a person that you just feel you can connect to. And and then there's those who feel like you can't connect to. But at the end of the day, it doesn't mean that I don't like you or don't, you know, I don't want to be your best friend just because I don't know you. Just, I just, you know, I just didn't have that full connection and it's okay. But when I see you, when I come into that room, I'll speak to you because that's just a part of who I am. I'll say hello And then when I leave out of the room, it's just another day. You're just another person in that room. You know, I don't feel like I have to chase you down in order to um, get to know more about you or 
feel like that, you know, Hey, just because you're in that room, I see you every week that we, that, like you said, we have to be friends that there is no such thing that's been written that says in stone that says we need to do those things. Um, but at the same time, it is definitely all about respect. Indeed. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yeah, I'm just sitting here like I don't have anything to add. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> well, I think and we I think we have definitely, you know, you know, gone over the topic more than enough, you know, so that the listeners can give it more thought in in and their personal, you know, preferences and and what they've gone through and their journey whether it's, you know, with colleagues or family, um, you know, or friends the whole nine yards. Um, cause I think it's even funny, even with, when you think about family that sometimes people just assume that just because you're family and I'm not talking about just your intermediate family, I'm talking about the larger portion of your family that, you know, people think, Oh, well, you know, you need to be close to them. You have to be their friends. Why they're, they're family, but I don't, you know, just, you have your personal reasons of why you feel like you don't need to be calling them every week or doing, you know, feeling like you have to be their best friend just because they're family. You know, so there's a lot of that, I think, too, that goes on that people don't think about. And then there are some people who feel that when you're not close to them, you, you know, that you're an enemy. And well, no, not necessarily. I mean, I know your family. I see you and, you know, that's great. And, you know, we may not talk every week, but it doesn't mean that I love you any less because we don't talk every week. <laughs> you know, so it's exactly. All, you exactly. know, there's, there's all types of reasons or uh, misconceptions and things that go on when people act the way that they act um, when it comes down to understanding what true friendship really is um, or what what it means to be an enemy. Uh, you know, an enemy is a strong, strong word. And um, when you dissect that and you and you keep that by itself and then you start to look at that person and you're saying to yourself, that's an enemy. How is that an enemy? Because you're not friends. I mean, I think people really, truly need to think about that very hard when they start to point the finger and say to themselves that, oh, I don't like her. She doesn't talk to me. She doesn't listen to that. You know, she's my enemy. That's that's just ridiculous. <laughs> it's like you really mm-hmm. need to think about the words that you say and the thoughts that you're putting out there and the vibes that you're putting out there because you really don't understand how you can influence somebody else, how you can affect their who they are as an individual and, or how you can hurt them. And cause they don't even understand why you're doing the things that you're doing to them just for whatever, because it's whatever's going on in your head and your thought process of that individual, you, you know, you've already tampered them in a way that they don't even deserve, you know, to be uh, put in. So anyway, mm-hmm. uh, I, I'm going to get off my soapbox now. I'm done. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually now I want to pick, I want to piggyback off of what you were saying. Cause, mm-hmm. um, to just uh, to to add just a, one more little piece, one more little piece of whipped cream on 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 the on the Sunday, <laughs> um, <laughs> I I found um, it is something that you said that made me think about this was I found that we as people tend to project our feelings onto other people. So when other people don't respond mm-hmm. in a way that we would, we think that there's something wrong with them. Yes. And um, and that's something that we, we we as people individually need to stop doing um, because I've had to tell people, you know, I don't like this type of thing. Like it, people that want to send me, put me in all these group texts and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And because I put a boundary out, then I'm the bad guy. Like, oh, Terry doesn't want to be right. in the group chat. No, I don't want to be in the group chat because they all have my stuff that I don't, that, that doesn't interest me. And I mean, you put me in a group chat, but I'm just going to mute it, and I'm not going to respond. <laughs> so right. Don't put me in it to begin with. And um, um, my my other piece to that was um, I want to speak about my brother. For those of you all who don't know, I have a brother. Um, uh, we're about a year apart. We don't hate one another. We're brothers. We get along just fine. I mean, there were some times during our, our prepubescent years where we used to fight but that that, that was growing pains you know sim, sim, you know siblings didn't understand what that's about mm-hmm. um but um and um like my brother randomly texted sent me a text message uh just a c- couple of days ago mm-hmm. and like my, my brother doesn't text he texts me usually three times a year <laughs> on my birthday he's always the first person to wish me happy birthday because he messages me at 12 01 a.m mm-hmm. on my birthday <laughs> 
um, which I usually don't see until the next day. Right. Uh, he messaged me to say Merry Christmas, and I might get a Happy Thanksgiving or a Happy New Year. Mm-hmm. You know, I might get both or I might get one or the other. So, but basically, he texts me like maybe three times a year. I can send him text messages, and he'll never respond. Mm-hmm. And, and it's not anything <laughs> offensive. It's just he's not that guy. And even talking to him on the phone, like he's not a, a, a talker. Mm-hmm. You know, I can call my mom. I can text my mom. And, you know, we, we communicate both ways. But my brother's just different. And so, you know, I did, but, you know, that doesn't mean he's my enemy because he doesn't respond or communicate in the way that I communicate. It just means we communicate differently. Right. Um, he's more of a person that he prefers to see you in person and and communicate with you face to face. Of course, in the in this panorama we're in, um, <laughs> you know, face to face is a little <laughs> different when you're in different households. So, right. um, but he, that's just who he is. Like. You know, when I go back, travel back home for family functions, he's like, hey, bro, bro. And we're like, he's all in my face. I'm like, why are you in my face? <laughs> but I have to remember, you know, I have to remind myself, you know, he is, he prefers that, um, that personal interaction as opposed mm-hmm. to talking to you on the phone or text messaging you. It was so funny when he met, when he texted, he texted me the other day. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, hey, I was like, hey, how are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm fine. How are you? Then my next thought was, are you okay? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I had just spoken to, to my grandmother and, and I had just talked to my grandmother and she was like, well, she said, I'll do good if I get a, a, a get a call from your brother once a year. I said, well, uh, we'll call my grandma Lala. I said, well, Lala, I'm good if I get a call from him once a year or even just a text. <laughs> so, and it was just so random that he messaged me like a couple of days later. I was like, what is going on here? Oh, so, um, But that, that just goes to speaking about, you know, everyone doesn't communicate in the same way. So mm-hmm. it's important that we not project our manner of communication onto other people and think that, oh, well, you're wrong because you don't communicate the way that I am. So right. now, I, you know, so now I, that means you're my enemy or, or you're against me just because you don't process things the same way that I do. It, it's uh, what's most important, whether it's a, a friend, a colleague, a, 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 a fellow gym goer or mm-hmm. whomever, just because the person doesn't respond to you the way that you respond to others doesn't make them wrong. And it, what's uh, very important is that we take time out to remove ourselves from who we are and think about and be kind to how we, other people respond to us. Because if, if, if we, if I think that if we as as a people take more time out to think about how other people, mm-hmm. that we we will just be in a much better place in society you know what we get so lost in who we are and that our our way is right right that we yeah. forget that other people have their own ways of doing things mm-hmm. and their way is not any less right it's just different so you know there is no right way really it's just we just do things differently exactly exactly Yep, well, I, I think I think that we have definitely hit it the topic perfectly, and we've you know been able to think more thoughts about you know what this really means to us and and how it can affect us personally, professionally, and then of course what it means to everybody. Um, so uh, you know this has been an amazing amazing topic. Again, we talked about just because we're not friends doesn't mean we have to be enemies. So we are not going to dive into this anymore. <laughs> I think that we have <laughs> have dug a deeper hole because we do really truly want people to think, 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 think. It's so important to think out the box. It's so important to not like, like Tisa, get caught up into your personal feelings on everything that goes on around you. It's, it's just truly thinking about what's best for you, but then how to handle everything else that surrounds you in life. So I hope that we have inspired someone today uh, by our message in our conversation. And, you know, we, we've definitely have come to the end of another great show. Definitely another end of a great show. Yay. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) We've made it. That was supposed to to sound more excited. Like, yay. (laughs) It just kind of came out. Yay. (laughs) Well, so like, are you guys I, out there listening to land? 
I'll give our cheesy hand clap you know, so everybody can understand. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So like we said, we are definitely at the end of this sh- of another show. I always truly love spending time with you, Mr. T. So And um, I enjoy being with you, Lady K. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Do you have any last words? For tonight's show. You know, I scoured um, the internet, the, the, the Googler, as Wendy Williams said, <laughs> and I, um, <laughs> so she calls it the Googler, um, for some uh, quotes, because I couldn't come up with anything on my own, and I kept coming around to the show topic as our um, moment of inspiration. So the title in, in and of itself is also the I think the moment of inspiration, you know, just mm-hmm. the uh just because we're not friends doesn't mean we have to be enemies. Amen. All right. Well, we have said it here live. <laughs> we are done with the show for this evening. Again, we would definitely like to thank you all for listening to us tonight. We will be back again next month with another amazing show topic. And follow us right here on Her Radio and Spotify. But until then, I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. And smooches to you, Mr. T. Love you. And we'll be talking mm. soon. Mwah. Bye. Bye. Good night, everyone. Moments with Lady K and Mr. T will return next month at 7 p.m. Follow us on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram.